Psychers. Warhammer 40k is generally associated with grim darkness and advanced technology and weaponry. When most people think of the setting, they think of space marines, bolters, mechs, giant ships, tanks, alien tools of war, and so on. 40k, however, is pretty firmly set between science fiction and fantasy, and it has no shortage of fantastical elements, especially if you look outside of the Imperium. Perhaps one of the most obvious fantasy elements is that of the presence of psychers, individuals capable of wielding psychic energy in some way. While certainly not as straight science fiction as spaceships and warp drives, and not as directly in the forefront of marketing as space marines and bolters, psychers are an integral aspect of the setting, and it would pretty much cease to exist as we know it without them. Let's take a look at what a psyker is and can do, and how they're each represented in the various factions. Let's begin with what exactly a psyker is. The term itself is really only used within the Imperium of Mankind, although its broad definition of an entity capable of utilizing the energy of the warp within their minds to project psychic powers fits into practically every species and faction in some way. To put it bluntly, psychers are essentially the magic wielders of the 40k universe, although naturally the nature of these psychic abilities is far more grim and dangerous than a traditional fantasy setting. Psychic powers are extremely vast and varied in their applications and presentations, with no set limits on what exactly a powerful psyker is capable of. There are a number of common disciplines, however, seen across different species across the galaxy, with the five most common being biomancy, divination, pyromancy, telekinesis, and telepathy. Biomancy is the manipulation of biological energy and processes. A biomancer is capable of changing the physical form in some way of themselves or their enemies, such as rapidly healing injuries, regrowing body parts, shape-shifting, increasing or decreasing someone's strength or speed, or just physically harming an individual, likely by turning their own body against them. Divination is the art of using the warp to glean information about the past and the future, with a battlefield diviner capable of foreseeing exactly when and how an opponent will act. Pyromancy is, of course, the ability to create and manipulate fire psychically, with pyromancers capable of sending out torrents of flame across a battlefield, or even transforming themselves into pure flames. Psychers gifted with telekinesis are able to convert their mental energies into physical force, lifting and throwing large objects with their minds, creating psychic barriers, or simply manipulating their enemies' bodies directly. Telepaths, on the other hand, can manipulate their enemies' minds directly, inducing paranoia, confusion, fatigue, or bolstering their allies' minds instead. No two psychers are alike, however, especially those of different species, so while they may share the same discipline, the manifestation of their psychic abilities could still vary greatly. As mentioned, there is also no real limit to the array of psychic abilities across the galaxy, so those five are only the most common disciplines, at least as far as the battlefield is concerned. Let's move on to discussing how psychers operate and appear within each faction and species, starting with the Imperium. Within humans, the ability to mentally draw upon the energy of the warp is a genetic mutation, one that first appeared at some point in humanity's ancient past, possibly since the Neolithic Age. Towards the end of the 22nd millennium, however, large amounts of psychers started to pop up across practically every human settled world, within a relatively short span of time. At the time this was believed to be a crucial step in humanity's slow evolution towards becoming a fully psychic species, much like the Eldari, all of whom are born with psychic capabilities to some degree. Unfortunately this evolutionary process has been uneven, 
and humanity continues to lack the mental development necessary to fully control their psychic abilities. Additionally, humans are relatively easily corrupted by the entities of chaos, and psychers especially, due to their interactions with the warp, represent a constant threat, if not controlled. For these reasons, the Emperor of Mankind largely banned the usage of any psychic powers in the Imperium outside of a few notable exceptions. Therefore, most psychers across the Imperium are distrusted and seen as dangerous mutants, even those serving the Imperium in an official capacity. This official capacity is largely overseen by the Adeptus Astra Telepathica, a branch of the government responsible for the recruitment and training of psychers. This process begins with the Black Ships, a fleet that traverses the Imperium constantly to transport anyone showcasing a degree of psychic potential. Any given planet in the Imperium is visited around once every hundred years by a black ship, at which point the planetary governor will have to pay a tithe of psychers. Once a black ship is filled with psychers, contained in anti-psychic cells, the ship will return to Terra to deliver them to the Scholastica Psychana along with any other psychers collected by Inquisitors, the Adeptus Arbides, or through any other means. Once in the Scholastica, every psyker will undergo an evaluation to determine their psychic potential and their character. Generally, youth are preferred here, as they are the easiest to train and indoctrinate, and will undergo a process known as soul binding in which a tiny portion of the Emperor's immense soul is bound to their own, to strengthen their resistance against the powers of chaos. Most psychers, however, do not fit the bill for official service, due to being too weak in ability, too dangerous to train, too old to change, or for some other reason. These unfortunate individuals are then sent over to the Golden Throne, the mechanism upon which the Emperor of Mankind sits and which is responsible for keeping the Emperor alive, allowing him to direct the beacon of the Astronomicon, making interstellar warp travel possible across the Imperium, and combating the forces of chaos that would seek to invade Terra through the webway. This is an immensely draining task, as Malkador, the most powerful human psyker to ever live, only managed to sit on the throne for a few hours in the Emperor's absence before his body and soul were consumed, while the Emperor has been on it for millennia. To maintain the Emperor's capabilities, he requires the constant daily sacrifice of psychers, a number that was originally around 1,000 every day, but at the present time is now up to around 4,000 every day. These psychers are those with no other use in the Imperium, and the process to sacrifice them to the Emperor requires them to be in a great deal of pain as they die, so that they lash out with psychic energy, which is then absorbed and transferred by specialized machinery. This is the primary purpose of the Black Ships, because if the Emperor ever fails in his duties on the Golden Throne, the Imperium of Mankind is pretty much over. Those that aren't sacrificed for the greater good are trained and conditioned to serve the Imperium as sanctioned psychers. Their exact role will depend on their psychic strength and their character, but the most common position for a sanctioned psyker in the Imperium is that of an astropath. These are the individuals responsible for interstellar communication across the Imperium, a vital role due to the sheer size of the Empire. Astropathic communication is an exhausting process that requires as much work to transmit as it does to decode, since messages often appear in the form of dreams or visions rather than simple words. Some messages might take weeks to reconstruct and decipher, while others might remain a mystery forever, so a talented astropath is an extremely valuable asset. Many fringe worlds don't possess any astropath whatsoever, instead relying on passing ships to make contact with the outside galaxy, meaning that often events can come and go without anyone else in the Imperium being aware. 
In addition to the thousands of psychers sacrificed to continue to empower the Emperor, a great number of trained astropaths must continue to power the Astronomicon itself so that it continues to function. This is a highly draining process, and around a thousand astropaths perish every day in the process. Another extremely important psychic role aboard most ships is that of a navigator, the individuals responsible for charting a course through the warp during jumps. While this is technically a psychic power, and navigators are considered mutants for that reason, they don't possess any other psychic powers outside of their warp eye, a mutation on their foreheads that allows them to gaze into the warp and guide starships through it. This is a genetic mutation, passed down through interbreeding amongst navigators, and controlled by a union of noble families called the Navis Nobilite. While some ships don't strictly require a navigator if they stick to short-range, calculated jumps along known routes, most of the Imperial Navy vessels do have a navigator on board, making them immensely valuable to the Imperium's existence. Beyond that, psychers prepared for a more militaristic role may end up being placed in a squad of the Imperial Guard, positioned as both psychic advisors to officers and weapons on the battlefield. As mentioned, being able to predict enemy movements, bolster allies' morale, or launch bolts of lightning from their hands makes them potentially extremely useful in a battle. Unfortunately, usage of psychic powers puts them at risk, both mentally and physically, and there have even been cases where a psyker's body has overloaded with warp energy exploding and taking out entire Imperial Guard squads. Because of this, and due to the overall distrust of mutants in the Imperium, sanctioned psychers in the Guard are at best tolerated and at worst loathed by Guardsmen. They're never allowed to stray far from their assigned Commissar, who will very likely execute them at the slightest sign of warp taint. This is a common demise for sanctioned psychers in the Guard, and has earned them the nickname of Bolt Magnets. If they manage to survive a full term of service with the Guard, they'll return to the Astra Telepathica, where they will undergo rigorous tests in order to potentially become a Primaris Psyker. These elite individuals are afforded a lot more responsibility and respect, being deemed to possess a greater deal of control over their abilities and are often attached to high-ranking Imperial Guard officers or Inquisitors. Powerful psychers might end up becoming Inquisitors themselves, as many members of the Inquisition are potent psychers, despite their steadfast goal in rooting out rogue psychers. Finally, as expected, the greatest of the psychers trained by the Scholastica might end up being selected by a Space Marine chapter to become a librarian the pinnacle of psychic potential within the Imperium. Many Space Marine chapters will also seek out potential psychic recruits from the same place they seek out other initiates, generally Death, Feral, and Hive worlds, where the strong are naturally separated from the weak. Those psychic recruits that survive the training and implant process, with their minds and bodies intact, will generally be managed by the chapter's chief librarian. Their duties, to begin with, will often involve the endless task of maintaining, studying, and cataloging the vast amounts of text within the librarius, the chapter's knowledge base. They will also be expected to enter into battle with their brothers, using their psychic abilities to aid the chapter in times of crisis. If they continue to survive and grow in experience and control, they will rise in rank, eventually becoming the most potent psychers amidst the Imperium, and acting as psychic communications officers for the chapter. The chief librarian is the greatest among these with some chapters' chief librarians said to be the most powerful psychers in the galaxy, aside from the Emperor. There are, of course, some chapters that deviate from this basic organization, such as the Space Wolves, who have no librarius and instead have rune priests, 
that operate in battle similar to librarians, or the Storm Seers of the White Scars, who believe that their powers are connected to the animistic spirits of the land and air. The Grey Knights chapter is a rather unique one, deserving of its own video, but they are a secretive chapter created by the Emperor and Malkador during the Horus Heresy to combat the demonic forces of Chaos. They act as the military arm of the Ordo Malleus of the Inquisition, and every single one of their members is a potent psyker, with no recorded example of any Grey Knight succumbing to Chaos corruption. This is perhaps due to their gene seed being taken from the Emperor himself, although since a number of the Primarchs fell to Chaos, the real reason is perhaps unknowable. Since all of the Grey Knights are psychers, they wield unique psychic-based weaponry into battle, such as the Psy Cannon, which fires ritually inscribed, psychically charged bolts, and Nemesis Force Weapons, extremely rare weapons whose power directly corresponds to the wielder's psychic potential, making them highly deadly weapons in the hands of the Grey Knights. Of course, the Imperium isn't the only faction possessing psychic might. As mentioned, the Eldar possess a special gift for psychic potential, with every Eldari being psychic to some degree, although the ones that harness that ability for warfare spend a great deal of time honing and training their ability. This massive psychic potential is a constant concern, however, especially when considering that the Eldari of the past gave birth to a new Chaos God so the present-day Eldar must remain highly disciplined and regulated. Those Eldari who choose to devote their lives to augmenting and harnessing their psychic abilities are known as Seers, considered to be the most dangerous path a craft world Eldari can walk, due to the threat of the Chaos Gods. This path is only undertaken by those who have already mastered at least one other path in their lifetime as it would be foolish to take a youth and open their mind to the warp without them having mastered themselves first. Most Eldari possess a visceral fear of drawing Slaanesh's attention, so very few end up becoming seers. In keeping with this idea of highly cautious and ritualized psychic use, seers don't open their minds directly to the warp in the same way that Imperial psychers do but rather utilize runes to draw and store warp energy. By meditating upon a rune and combining different runes, a seer can use the contained warp energy to create powerful rituals, the process of which allows them to mentally reach the correct mindset to unleash the power, meaning that the seer can manifest the ritual without risk. There is a risk, however, when a seer must learn from another seer how to use a rune they haven't mastered yet, or even worse, if they need to create a new rune to make a new ritual, a process that can cause a seer to struggle to find the correct mindset for the ritual, opening them up to peril. While all seers are capable of a myriad of psychic abilities, depending on their past experiences and role within each craft world, there are a number of more dedicated roles that a seer may end up walking. A bone singer is the engineer and craftsman of the craft world Eldari, using their psychic abilities to create and manipulate wraith bone, which is crystallized warp energy. While all Eldari are able to psychically influence wraith bone in some ways, bone singers are those that focus on its mastery, creating and repairing weapons, armor, vehicles, constructs, and even the craft worlds themselves out of the substance. Warlocks are those that have previously walked the path of the warrior, and now use their psychic powers in battle, harnessing their most destructive impulses. In addition to utilizing the psychic runes to summon shields of energy around themselves or unleash blasts of energy, warlocks also wield a powerful force weapon known as a Witch Blade, focusing the Warlock's psychic force to strike with a devastating burst that can incinerate enemies instantly. 
Finally, Farseers are the most potent psychers amidst the Eldari, with a council of them generally governing each craft world. Their most powerful ability is that of divination, allowing Farseers to peer into the future on a large scale to ensure that the remaining Eldari do not suffer any more great losses. Much of their time is spent in a trance-like state, as their spirit roams throughout the wraithbone of their craft world, although they can be called into battle if absolutely necessary, utilizing immense psychic potential to unleash storms of eldritch energy. Much like the Imperium's chief librarians, Farseers number amongst the most potent psychers in the galaxy. In contrast, the Drukhari, or Dark Eldar, have practically no psychers amongst their number. The innate psychic abilities of the Eldar have atrophied within the Dark Eldar, partly due to their focus on physical athleticism, and partly due to them fearing the attention of Slanesh even more than the craft world Eldari. For this reason, the usage of psychic powers is one of the few things forbidden in their capital city, Kimora. Shadow Seers, however, members of the independent subset of Eldar known as Harlequins, are potent psychers focusing on spreading confusion and fear, and while they are allowed to travel openly within Kimora, they are often distrusted. As expected, the forces of chaos include a great deal of individuals with psychic potential, with the most common being sorcerers capable of summoning demons and unleashing devastating psychic powers on a battlefield. The most potent of Chaos Psychers worship the Chaos God Zinch, who is devoted to sorcery, and often gifts powerful psychic abilities to his followers. Unlike Imperial Psychers, who must restrain themselves lest they be corrupted by Chaos, Chaos Sorcerers are already corrupted and empowered by the energies of the Warp allowing them to unleash horrific powers with little regard for the consequences. That being said, sorcerers are not necessarily mad, and must still resist the dangers of overusage of the warp if they want to maintain their grip on reality. Additionally, demons of the warp have no qualms about feasting on their own, and any psychic usage can draw them in. Mutation and degeneration are also constant dangers, as a powerful spell gone awry can easily turn a powerful sorcerer into a mindless chaos spawn, capable of being little more than cannon fodder in future battles. Orcs are another innately psychic species, in a similar way to the Eldari, but they possess far, far less control over their psychic abilities. Instead, each orc unconsciously generates a psychic energy field, known as Wa. This field grows more potent and intense when more and more orcs gather together and get excited, especially while fighting, which is what gives the orcs momentum to continue along on a military campaign, also called a Wa. It's theorized that this psychic field is what allows the ramshackle and poorly designed orc technology to actually function, as orcs believe that something should work, so it works. Many orc built weapons will not function at all unless wielded by an orc, so it would seem that orcs psychic abilities are integral to their entire way of life. Orcs also possess their own psychers, however, known as weird boys that are capable of absorbing the psychic energy generated by other orcs and expelling it, generally in a violent manner. Weird boys have very little control over this ability, and will unconsciously absorb any psychic emissions from nearby orcs, forcing them to expel it in some way, or else their own heads will explode. This absorption is not an enjoyable process for them and most weird boys have to be forced onto a battlefield, driven mad by the massive amounts of psychic energy forced into them. During a full-scale war, many of them will either flee or get caught up in a suicidal frenzy, becoming extremely dangerous psychic weapons. 
weird boys in general are disliked by other orcs, and kept apart from them in encampments, where they are guarded by a couple of minders. The most potent of the weird boys are known as warp heads, those that have survived enough battles to become saturated with the warp, and actually come to enjoy the usage of their powers. Perhaps the most psychically active race in the entire galaxy are the Tyranids, as every single Tyranid is telepathically connected to all other Tyranids, through the Hive Mind. The Hive Mind is said to be an entity of pure psychic energy that originated outside of the Milky Way galaxy and acts through the Hive Tyrants, which in turn command every other Tyranid around them. The hive mind's potent psychic ability causes it to disrupt the normal flow of psychic energy within the immaterium, much in the same way as a warp storm, an effect known as the shadow in the warp. It uses this when it unleashes a hive fleet, cutting off astropathic communications and reinforcements, making tyranid invasions especially deadly. It even affects individuals in the area manifesting as a malaise that can't be shaken, amplified if the person has any psychic potential. Most Tyranids do not possess any psychic abilities outside of this constant telepathy, but Zoanthropes are powerful psychers engineered from harvested Eldari DNA. They are capable of firing powerful warp blasts that can kill a space marine, and can levitate over a battlefield to rain down psychic power. They also can create bubbles of warp energy around themselves, shielding them from damage and making them very hard to kill. That being said, they are still susceptible to burning themselves out, much like most other psychers, and their craniums have been observed to burst if they overuse their abilities. There also exist much larger Tyranids, such as the Norn Queens, that are presumed to be psychers of immense power but the full extent of their abilities is still unknown. Additionally, some members of the Gene Stealers, a subsect of Tyranids designed to infiltrate other species' worlds, can develop psychic powers similar to a Psyker. These creatures, called Maguses, use these powers for both domination, to build a Gene Stealer cult and amass power, and for warfare. Lastly, the Tau and the Necron are two factions that possess no psychic abilities amongst their number, for different reasons. The Necrons are a species of machine constructs that gave up their souls long ago, cutting them off entirely from utilizing psychic abilities. They cannot sense or influence the warp in any way innately, and thus hate and fear it utilizing technology specifically designed for destroying psychers. The Necrons had never had much love for the powers of the warp, however, as long ago they battled against the Old Ones, who possessed extremely potent psychic powers, and were responsible for creating the Webway and the Eldari species. The Tau have so far not developed any psychers of their own, and in fact are naturally resistant to the mutating effects of Chaos. It was originally believed that the Tau Ethereals, the ruling class of the Tau, possessed some psychic ability, as they're able to maintain absolute authority over the other Tau casts. This was later determined to be related to an unknown organ in the center of their foreheads, a larger version than those possessed by other Tau casts. Psychers are a potent asset across most factions of Warhammer 40k from Imperial Astropaths that allow for interstellar communication, to Orc Weird Boys capable of leveling a battlefield in explosive blasts of psychic energy. One theme that runs through all of it, however, is the inherent danger in utilizing psychic abilities, even amongst the forces of chaos. Great power at great cost is certainly the idea of psychers, and while enough psychic energy gathered together could theoretically do just about anything, it could also just as easily spawn a new chaos god, or worse. The Emperor of Mankind remains an unparalleled psyker, and it's unlikely that any individual will ever come close to his capabilities, but more and more psychers are popping up across the galaxy 
and that much interaction with the warp is probably not a good thing, especially if it's not kept on a tight leash. At the end of the day though, psychers are cool, because magic is cool, and it's at its coolest when someone is raining down psychic death on a battlefield. 